video, I'm going to show you how we can solve uh, an elliptic partial differential equation using Lyman's method. Uh, this is the exact same partial differential equation that we solved in the last video, but we use the instead of using the finite difference method, we're going to use uh, Lyman's method here. Um, just to uh, summarize what we talked about last time, so we're going to solve a second order differential equation given here. So partial squared phi partial x squared plus partial squared phi partial y squared. Um, phi is our potential. We're going to solve for that potential um, given the boundary conditions that you see here. So phi is equal to y on the left, phi is equal to x on the bottom, 1 minus y on the right, 1 minus x on the top. Um, and this describes two sources and opposite corners and two sinks in the opposite corner. So we expect flow to come out of the sources and into the sinks. Um, and once we have the potential, this is kind of unique to this problem, but we can actually solve for the velocity field. U is the x component of velocity, v is the y component of velocity, and we can solve for those uh, once we have the potential. But in general, we're going to solve an equation, a partial differential equation, um, like the one shown here. And here we're going to use Leibniz method. So to use Leibniz method, uh, step one is to discretize. And here I'm going to do it rather quickly. If you're curious about what I'm doing here, the, the first video where in the finite difference method goes into a lot more detail. But we're going to just plug in our standard finite difference operators for uh, both derivatives. So here we have phi i minus 1j minus 2 phi ij plus phi i plus 1j all over dx squared. And that's the, uh, the first term, the um, d d squared phi dx squared. Uh, the next term that we have here is the, uh, what is that term? Uh, sorry, phi i j minus 1 minus 2 phi i j plus phi i j plus 1 all over dy squared. And this we're going to say equal to 0. And the idea of Leibniz method is now to take this discretized equation and solve for phi ij. So we have phi ij here and over here. We're going to move that to the left-hand side of the equation, everything else to the right-hand side of the equation. And um, I can do that. Um, I'm going to simplify my life a little bit. And I'm going to let delta x equal delta y. And if I do that, then both delta x squared and delta y squared um, I can just cancel them out of that previous equation. And then I can um, write this as phi ij is equal to 1 fourth times phi i minus 1j plus phi i plus 1j plus phi i j minus 1 plus phi i j plus 1. Um, and that's our equation. So I just rearranged that equation. And now this is the equation that we're going to use with Leibniz method to compute our potential phi. And the idea, again, for Leibniz method is just to apply this equation over and over again at all interior grid points. And that eventually, if we keep doing this over and over again, will converge to our solution. So now we're going to go into MATLAB and write a little code that solves this equation um, so we can solve for the potential. So. Let's go into MATLAB and let me create a new function. So here we're going to solve PDE using Leibniz method. And I'm going to start by clearing the workspace and cl clearing the command window. Um, then I'm going to have some inputs. So I'm going to have NX, let's say 50 points, and Y is equal to 50. Lx for this problem is 1, Ly is equal to 1, uh, and do I need anything else? I don't think so. So I'm going to uh, create an initial guess for the solution. So this is not the actual solution, it's just my initial guess, and then Leibniz method will correct this initial guess. So I'm going to be solving for phi, and I'm going to create a bunch of zeros nx by ny zeros. And then I, oh, I add on the boundary conditions. Um, so the boundary conditions for this problem are going to depend on x and y. So let me create my grid. 
my grid x is equal to a lin space from 0 to lx with nx points. So that just creates the x grid starting at 0, going to lx with nx points. y is lin space 0 to ly with ny points. And then I can get my dx is equal to, say, the second grid point minus the first grid point. And dy is uh, y2 minus y1. OK. So I've created the grid, initialized my guess, so I'm just guessing that phi is equal to zero everywhere. Now I'm going to set my boundary conditions. So let's start with the uh, top boundary. Let's start with the bottom boundary. And on the bottom, we know that phi is equal to just x. That's the boundary condition I gave you um, for this problem. So on the bottom boundary, I know that uh, j, my, my vertical index, is equal to 1. So I'm at the first first j set of cells, and I'm going to do all i cells. So for i is equal to 1 through nx, I need to set the boundary condition. And that boundary condition is phi of ij is equal to x of i. So that puts in the value, x, the i of x value, into phi um, across the bottom of this um, domain. So the top boundary condition is that phi is equal to 1 minus x. And at the top, j is equal to ny. And I'm going to loop over all x. So for i is equal to 1 through nx, I'm going to set phi equal to 1 minus x of i. OK, we're making progress. Let's do the left boundary condition. So on the left boundary, we have phi is equal to y. And at the left boundary, i is equal to 1. And we loop over all j. So j, my vertical index, goes 1 through ny. And I set phi there equal to y of j. So I'm at the jth y location. I put that into phi. Then I need my right boundary condition. And at the right boundary condition, phi is equal to 1 minus y. I forgot a semicolon. That's what MATLAB's telling me. Uh, on the left, on the right side, i is equal to nx. And I loop over j at that location, and I can set phi ij equal to 1 minus y of j. OK. So at this point, we've created our initial guess, so 0 everywhere, and then we put our boundary points in. Now we do the, the magic of Leibniz method, where we uh, loop over interior grid points. So we can do that by doing for uh, i is equal to 2 through nx minus 1. So I'm skipping the first grid point, and I'm skipping the last grid point. And I'll do the same in j. So j is equal to 2 through ny minus 1. So I'll skip all of the outside border when I do those two steps together. And then I'm just going to update phi. So phi at this grid point is equal to our equation. And let me just remind ourselves of what that equation is. It's this one at the bottom, it's one fourth of all of our neighbors, which is interesting. It's the average of all our neighboring values. So we add up the four neighbors and divide by four. So we can just say that this is one fourth, so 0 0.25 times phi of i minus 1j plus phi of i plus 1j plus phi of i j minus 1 plus phi of i j plus 1. And I'm telling you that uh, if you do this over and over again, you'll get the solution. So then we can plot the solution. And we're going to do a surface plot of x, comma, y, comma, phi. And uh, here you have to take the transpose. We've talked about that before. That uh, just rotates phi so it matches what MATLAB expects. Put some labels on here. And if we run that, so I'm going to call this uh, fluid potential Leibniz. And oh, that's weird. Let's uh, rerun that. That looks strange. Right. I totally forgot. So Leibniz method, we do this. We loop over all into your points, but we have to do this over and over again. So we need another loop around this where we 
loop over iterations. We have to do this over and over again. So we're going to do for, I'm just going to call it iter is equal to one through, um, say a thousand. Let's do a thousand iterations. And we're going to update all the interior points over and over again. We're update them each point a thousand times. Let's run that. And there, that's more of that's what I was expecting. Um, and if you go back to the finite difference video, you'll see exactly that same solution. And just like the finite difference video, if you want, at this point, you could take this phi and convert it to a velocity field. Um, and I'm not going to redo that here, but that's in that previous video. But that's an alternative way to compute this exact same solution using Lyman's method. The advantage here is we did not have to create all those matrices. Um, the disadvantage is we have to do this iteration over and over again which for larger problems can become expensive, but for, for th this problem, uh, both approaches are, are very, very fast.